Welcome to the Dr. Tom Show today. I am so excited to have a great friend of mine and fantastic human being, Charlie, on the show. Now, Charlie is uh, not only a world-class, and I do mean that, a world-class chiropractor, uh, but she's also a fantastic speaker. But really what we're going to talk about today is she is a really inspirational and amazing breathwork coach. I know that from personal experience, but I also know it from the experiences of the people she's helped directly, my patients, um, from the work that she does. She really has committed her time to helping us all de-stress at probably one of the most important times that we can start to do that. And Charlie, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. I really appreciate you being here. Well, thank you so much for having me, Tom. I love your backdrop. I love the bookshelf that you've got behind you. It's fantastic. Me too. On YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, but you know what? It's giving me some serenity in all of this chaos. And, you know, there is a lot of chaos at the moment. And what I want to talk about today and what you are so expert in is helping us de-stress. So the world is stressed. What can we do about it? Is there something that, you know, we're going to talk through that, but is there something we can do to really help ourselves? What is that? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, I find it really strange, I don't know about you having this conversation now, because yes, three months ago when lockdown happened, we were talking a lot about stress. And actually I found with clients and patients and people is that people are really starting to feel it now. I think initially everything was a bit of a shock. And now, you know, things are still changing. There's still a lot to process and the world is still so very much different. Um, so I think one of the most important things that we can do is make sure that we have space to really check in with ourselves and check in with our body. We can get very caught up in reading the news, um, with our emotions, with, uh, lots of information, our mind buzzing off in all sorts of directions. And what a lot of us don't tend to do is actually take time to um really tap into our body and feel what's going on and actually give ourselves a chance to deload from all this information and all this stuff going on it's so true and yeah. what, a, what a lot of us don't realize is that we actually have the ability to do that i think a lot of us get caught up in the drama and mm. can't and i suppose the reason we're so stressed is because there is no there is no end you know, fear of the unknown i think breeds a huge amount of stress like we know there's something going on and whatever your opinions are on COVID and this was obviously recorded during the time of, of, of COVID. Um, but, you know, no matter what your opinions are, nobody knows where the end is. Like nobody knows where the end is and that can breed a lot of stress. But we have the ability to do something about that ourselves. Is mm -hmm. that right? Totally, totally. Um, I mean, we talk about this a lot in chiropractic. We talk about being in fight or flight mode. Um, when adrenaline is pumping around our body and our muscles are tense and that is mirrored by our breathing So when we are stressed out what happens is we tend to breathe through our chest. We breathe in a really shallow manner um, We don't get enough oxygen to the brain and what happens is all we're doing is sending a constant feedback loop that we're just in stress and panic and our body never gets a chance to really relax and rest and restore so what is absolutely essential at the moment is we have to schedule in time where we can just put everything aside and learn to calm down our body. And a really, really great way that we can do that by ourselves, it's right under our nose. We can do it through breathing. So by changing how we breathe and changing how much oxygen is coming into our body, that's going to instantly change our energy. It's going to help us to move through emotions and it's going to move us towards that parasympathetic state. So when you're doing breath work, you can actually enter a parasympathetic state in as quickly as five or 10 minutes. So um, as soon as you've got that toolkit, it's something that you can do anywhere, anytime when you just need that calm. So it only takes about five minutes, uh, 10 minutes if you're probably not practiced at it. Would I, is, that, is that right? But five minutes if you're good at it? So it's twofold. It's twofold. So um, I recommend having a daily practice. So yeah. having like a daily meditation practice and having time where you can really refine how you're breathing. Um, it doesn't take long to start to reset the nervous system with the breathing. Having said that, what I always recommend is doing a deep dive. So once a week, having a good hour where you're really working through. Can I swear? 
yeah. When you're really working through shit, oh, like shit that's still fucked around right, the week before, <laughs> over the pandemic. <laughs> you, you Such a naughty girl. With that girl. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're absolutely right. Like we, we don't take the time. And people are like, an hour? I can't give an hour. But if you think about fight and flight response, your body's working harder. Is that right? So, yes. like, if I put you on a treadmill and made it work harder, you would last not so much time. And therefore, I suppose the same is true for our life, is it not? That if we're working in fight and flight and stress all the time, we're actually reducing our lifespan? Totally, totally. So by... and, um, and, and, you know, massively depleting our immune system, which we need right now. Yeah, so, so just these yeah. little practices, just an hour a day, can help your immune system, can potentially prolong your life. Um, tell us about parasympathetic, because, you know, sympathetic people know sympathetic, I'm stressed, that fight and flight. We talk about that a lot, but we don't talk enough about parasympathetic. What is parasympathetic? So parasympathetic is, it's the part of our nervous system that is responsible for restoring everything in our body. So helping us to rest, helping us to heal, helping us to digest our food. Um, if we aren't able to move fully into parasympathetic mode, basically, our body can never fully heal. It's going, to, it's going to affect our sleep. It's going to affect how we think. Um, if we stay in fight or flight, we're very much in a primitive survival mode, whereas the parasympathetic nervous system is actually the part of our body that will help us thrive. And why, why isn't it active? Why, why doesn't it just work? Because we've got to think in terms of the human race, how we're going to survive. So say if um, a bear came into the room now, my body would have to either fight the bear or run. My body's not really thinking about digesting food or restoring my cells. Like it's got to deal with that stuff first. So, um, you know, our brains don't actually know the difference as to whether we're stressing out about a virus or whether we're stressing out about a bear. It's the same thing. And if our body is constantly trying to deal with that threat, then it just, it hasn't got the time or the capacity to be able to deal with all the other systems in our body. So I think we can agree that having a, a better functioning parasympathetic nervous system is essential for good health and a good life. Is that right? Yeah, totally. So if I was to say to you, I just don't have time to do that, what would your answer be? Then you need to do it more. <laughs> I think there's a famous love quote it. on that. <laughs> I love it. Um, do you know, like I have meditated for years. I've done breath work for the past four years, and my productivity absolutely soars, and my ability to deal with situations, how I communicate with people, everything I do is actually an absolute game changer. Because um, have you heard of a concept called Einstein time? Yes, but I can't tell you what it is because i heard this just the other day someone spoke tell me about einstein i think you were saying about einstein time on your instagram or something like that yeah tell probably, probably. Yes. tell me about so, einstein time well we all have a weird relationship with time don't we yes we're either rushing and we don't have enough time like i, I was rushing today for this podcast or uh we had too much you know people said during lockdown i just didn't know what to do with myself i just had too much time Mm. So time is very much like a man-made concept. So Einstein time is about making time work for us rather than constantly being a slave to it. So um, by doing the breath work, what happens is you can really get into what's called a state of flow. So it's going to calm down your nervous system. You're going to be thinking more sharply. You're naturally more creative. It's going to give you a little bit of state, a little bit of space for how you respond to your day. And you hack something called flow states. So once you are hacking flow states, then actually time becomes much more something that you can do a dance with rather than it being a constant chase. So if you are struggling with time, breathe. I love that. So <laughs> now, now, do you know what? I, I am totally agreeing with what you're saying. Yeah. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak like my father um, because he would be cringing. And I hope he listens to this. He'd be cringing when he hears <laughs> it. But 
Charlie, I'm breathing now. What's the difference? Yeah, totally. A lot of people say that because we were born breathing, hey? Mm. Um, so the reason why breathwork is really important because, is because actually about 80% of the UK don't breathe properly. So a bit like with a lot of things, we don't live necessarily a natural life. Even during the circumstances at the moment, we still tend to be very, very busy. Um, so what has happened over time is we've adapted our breathing. And what's happened is most of us are in constant oxygen starvation, would you know it? So it means that we breathe more rapidly than we actually should. This is generally talking. And we don't fully engage our primary breathing muscles. So it means constantly throughout the day, throughout the day our body is trying to bring oxygen into our body. Another thing that we're really bad at doing is a lot of us are mouth breathers. So um, you probably find this weird because when I do my deep dives, you breathe out of your mouth. But mm. generally day to day, you should breathe through your nose. So all these things are just habits that we've accumulated over time, which don't actually serve our body. It's true. It's true. And I, I know that from as a, as a child having had asthma and being taught to breathe properly. And, you know, if, if we said now, we said, to all our audience take a deep breath in they'd probably all lift their shoulders and puff their chest out is that right and why is that wrong because um we're using our accessory muscles and to take a full breath you should be fully activating your diaphragm and actually when you fully activate your diaphragm you massage all the organs beneath it and you get way more oxygen into your body so if you're just breathing from this part, if you imagine the difference in your body, this part to this part is yeah. huge. So from your, so so you're only actually getting a tiny portion of the oxygen that you need. So for those who are listening on the podcast, it's, it's, it's instead of breathing from the chest, you're breathing more from the diaphragm, which sits underneath your rib cage and, and your belly. Is that right? So more sort of belly. Oh yeah, I should breathing. explain that rather than, yeah, totally. Yeah. So breathing from your lower belly. Yeah. Um, and really practicing using your diaphragm. Um, yeah. This is something that we can get better at. The most important thing with any breath work, the place to start is awareness. A bit like, you know, when you first notice that you've got bad posture, it's the same thing. Mm. So an another thing just to say on, uh, to answer your dad, so hi Tom's dad, if he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> my, dad, my dad would ask exactly the same. Um, is that our breathing mirrors our life. So it's really fascinating. You can do something called a breath scan. So what I would do with you, Tom, is I would get you to lie down and I would watch you breathe for 10 minutes. And that tells me a lot about how you're doing in life at the moment. So when we're feeling really happy, when we're engaging in things that we love, when we're moving forwards in our life, when we're not feeling super stressed or worried about something, then we tend to take much deeper, fuller breaths. When we have something going on, our breathing is massively affected. And just to break it down to simple things, think about the last time you were angry, what happens? We tend to hold our breath, everything goes like this. When you're sad, you're sobbing, you can barely get words out because the breath's going. Um, so it's actually, it's a survival mechanism that we have developed. So the less you breathe, the less you feel. So that's automatically what we tend to do when we're in confrontation or feeling in, in some kind of uncomfortable situation it's amazing how important breath is it's interesting a, a couple of shows ago i interviewed a, a, a um a laughter expert or laughter depending on which part of the country you come from laughter. um so and he's saying laughter is simply just a breath it's just an extended breath so it can not only relax us but make us happy and i know i've seen some of the people go through the breath work with you and bringing up some amazing emotions why does getting in touch with our breath bring up emotions and why why is that important to bring those emotions to the surface yeah really good question um so a few things um one of the biggest things is as i said at the start of the show a lot of us don't spend time just sitting with ourselves you know we can distract ourselves with busy so even just the act of lying down and breathing and having that awareness can often bring things up that we might not 100% have processed so as we breathe as we get more oxygen into our body what happens is we move energy around our body and if we think about emotions as energy in motion mm -hmm. energy has to move so say if something happened to you Tom sorry to get personal 
Um, say if a teacher called you stupid at school, you know, something that's affected you for a long time. Definitely. That can actually stay in your body. That can be stuck energy. So as you start to breathe and you do this um, deep kind of breathing, what happens is you start to move that energy. So as soon as you move the energy, you're going to start to feel those emotions. The cool thing is, is that as soon as you start to feel those emotions, you're in the process of moving through it. And once you've moved through it, you've started to move the energy, which I find amazing because you can totally, you can change someone's patterns from when they were a child just by getting it shifted and really like moving and working through it. Wow. Hmm. So I need to practice this emotion stuff because I was told I was stupid a lot at school. Um, and that was not personal. <laughs> just hit the nail on the head. Well done. Um, that's why I interview other people, not myself. Um, anyway, so if it so it can help with our health life. So can it help with our personal life? Can it? Help, what else can it help with? Can it help with our relationships? Can it help with our business? Where, where else can it help? And give us some context on that. Totally. So. Um... Relationships is a big one as well for lots of reasons. Um, so mostly a relationship problem, any type of relationship, it's usually some kind of communication problem or it's some kind of pattern that we've developed, hey? So the cool thing is with the breath work is every time we do it, we are, I'm trying not to get too woo-woo, we are connecting to a deeper part of ourselves. So what happens when we connect to a deeper part of ourselves is it can sometimes get rid of all the crap that we can pick up throughout life. Second thing is, is that the calmer we are and the more centered we are in our body, the less likely we are to react. So give the COVID example, if you were isolating with your partner, there were probably times when things got a bit hectic. If you'd actually given yourself a chance to go away and breathe and process that a little bit, then it can really take out a lot of the charge of what's going on in the situation. Um, my motto is always, if in doubt, breathe it out. So if you're ever having a moment, you know where things are getting tricky in a relationship and you've got to have that sweaty 10 minute conversation that you don't want to have, really try and stay in the moment and breathe through it. That would be my biggest advice. Not that I'm the best person in the world with relationships, but um, I have seen it help lots and lots of people. I think, the, but um, to counter that, the most important relationship that we can ever have, I suppose, is with ourselves. Totally, and that, and that mirrors can, everything else. Exactly, and that comes back down to breathing and working through those emotions. When, when would be the best time to start breath work? Now. Now, and it, like, is it good for kids? Can kids start doing it? Yes, yeah, so kids is a little bit different. It depends what age you're talking about. Um, like with most things, kids are better than us, aren't they? <laughs> Mm. So uh, they tend to be much more intuitive when you teach them the breath work than we are. Um, as adults, it tends to take us longer to get used to it. So, um, so I do get quite a lot of questions actually about breath work for kids. It depends on the age. So uh, 14 upwards, they can do the same breath work as adults. If they're under 14, then I just recommend them um, breathing at their own pace so they can still... It's hard to explain if you haven't done a session of mine. They can still listen to the music. They can still follow my guidance. But I just tell them to kind of be a bit more playful with it and do yeah. what feels good for them. Um, or just give them something really simple, breathing exercises, um, just as a toolkit that they can deal with, you know, day to day. Like, for example, if they're really young, sometimes what I might make them do is follow, oh, I will talk it, is follow around their hand. So if they draw around their hand and breathe in as they go up a finger and down as they go down a finger, just something super simple that they can grasp the concept of. Uh, but you can absolutely get kids involved. That's perfect. So I, su I, su I suppose breathwork has the ability to transform a lot. Like, you know, if you're, if you're a business person and you're, you're stressed and you want more productivity, great. Uh, if, you, if you're in a company, you've got employees to get them more productive, brilliant uh, and if you're going through stressful times or you want to improve your body's health it's perfect is there anyone breathwork not for uh well no because we all breathe um and it's it's the only physiological function that we actually have control of that's why it's so powerful and so cool 
Um, the only people that need to be careful are people who have a lot of heart issues or breathing issues. So breathwork can help breathing issues. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, you need to do it in a really careful way. Um, also, if you are heavily pregnant, you would have to be careful too. <laughs> Get very sympathetic and just let it go. The baby comes out. Is that right? I have not experienced you know, this yet, Tom, so I can't. Uh, <laughs> uh, we did, well, we just yeah, talked about motherhood sorry. on the last podcast, so that's fine. I'm sure there's some, <laughs> some info on there. Um, so, I was going to say, can you give the people listening a little tip that they can do themselves? Can you give them just something that they can do themselves? Yeah, totally. Um, so, my recommendation would be to give yourself a week to really notice the difference of it, although you'll notice straight away from a day. Um, if you have a morning routine, you can add it into your morning routine, but pick a time of the day where you have 10 minutes and you just sit with yourself and focus on your breath. So the first thing with anything is just become aware, become more aware of your body, become more aware of how you're breathing. And also I would say start to notice throughout times in the day if you can feel yourself catching your breath. So you know if you have a moment where you feel uncomfortable and you're holding it, just give yourself a few seconds meditation by focusing on the breath in, holding for a second, breathing out and holding for a second. Add in on top of that, you want to do a little bit more than that. Find your comfortable spot, have your 10 minutes. I have lots of playlists on Spotify, so I can leave you the link. Um, and just practice breathing really calmly in through your nose for six, and out through your mouth for six. Literally, doing that for 10 minutes is an absolute game changer. This is just really slowing that breath down, connecting with yourself and, and allowing yourself that time. Totally. So, I've learned so much from, from what we've been through and I certainly know that the breath work, work, breath work works. You're, you're even doing a workshop for our uh, patients, I believe, this weekend. Is that right? I think it's, so. Yeah. 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 So I, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> so I'm really excited for that. And, and so are so many people who are going to join us for it. For everybody listening, is there something that you could give them, apart from what you've just said, but is there a piece of advice that you could give everybody to take away? Because we're all, whether we feel it or not, we're all a little bit stressed. The consciousness of humanity at the moment is suppressed and stressed. Um, what tip would you give everybody from today? Come and do my uh, breath workshops. No, I'm joking. Definitely. Um, my biggest, my biggest tip is, um, as I said, like make sure that you are scheduling time into your diary every week. I've been guilty of this the past couple of weeks. So time in your diary where you're spending time with yourself, even if it's doing yoga, but something where you're incorporating a little bit of breath giving yourself at least a few hours a week and 10 minutes a day is just going to really give you some space to keep going and fill up your fuel tank again and actually check in with how you're doing. Um, Cause I think oftentimes a bit like with chiropractic as well, things can kind of go under the surface for a long time before we check in and see how we are. And we think, ah, oh, I'm actually super, super stressed or feeling sick. Like you want to avoid that. So I would say just make sure you're as serious with, having time for yourself as you are for your meetings, you know? Yeah. That's really helpful. And it's really sound advice that I know everybody's going to take away and really, really appreciate that. And for those who want to find out more, uh, look further into this and work with you, where can people find out about you, Charlie? Um, so they can get on my website. Um, I need to change the terrible name, but it's www.sourcebreathworkwithcharliemalt.co.uk. Uh, you can check out the membership on there. You can follow me on Instagram. That's where I mostly am. So my Instagram handle is DC Charlie Malt, or you can drop me a message on Facebook, Charlie Malt. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, I would love to help. I'm actually, oh, no point because uh, you're not posting the podcast today. But uh, yeah, I'm doing an online retreat this Sunday. Oh, so there's, yeah. lots, there's lots of things to do. Yeah. Well, we'll try and get that out on our social media today to try and uh, encourage some uh, people to go on that. And I would encourage people to go on that. Follow Charlie on Instagram. It's, it's really worth a watch. Um, 
not only is she giving some great breathwork advice, but she also likes coffee and she's quite clumsy. So it's quite funny to watch, actually. Uh, so I appreciate that, Charlie. <laughs> um, thank you ever so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate everything that you've shared with us and I'm going to get a lot from it. And I know our audience are going to get a lot from it too. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Tom. Perfect. Let me just stop the recording.